Hey Grokites! Today we're going to grok how Dungeons & Dragons can serve as family therapy. Dungeons & Dragons, commonly known as D&D, &D, was created in the early 1970s by two presumably very bored men named Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. They created a world of heroic fantasy, based on battle war games and the individual exploits of heroes. But D&D wasn't the first of its kind. Before D&D, there was something called Chainmail, created by Gary Gygax and another one of his board friends, Jeff Perrin. And before Chainmail, there was Playing at the World, created by John Peterson. Why am I mentioning all these games? I'm told that if I don't, everyone who loves D&D will hate me. So I want to cover all my bases here. Okay. Here's how Dungeons & Dragons works. While there are pre-made adventures, for those of you who don't want to do the creative heavy lifting, generally speaking, there's something called a Dungeon Master, or a DM, and he or she creates an adventure that you insert yourself into. The DM might set the stage for the game by saying something like this. Ready? You all arrive on the docks of an abandoned city. Okay. Or... Now you wander into a forest covered in moss. Or <laughs> you all wake up from your nap to find yourselves handcuffed and being transported through your own town. It is an open-ended game of communal storytelling. The DM has like some rules and guidelines for like what you should do and where things should go, but for the most part, it's literally about you making decisions and the DM on the spot spontaneously deciding how other characters would react. Okay, for example, the DM might say you find yourselves on a desert island, and it's up to you and your group what you want to do. Do you want to look for a boat? Do you want to seek shelter? Do you want to make something to eat? Whatever you want, it's up to you. And even though the DM may have an idea of where he or she wants the story to go, everything is totally spontaneous and there's no formula, which is awesome. You can use a battle map, but you don't need to. And there are miniature figures that you can use, but you don't need to use them either. So basically, if all you have is your imagination and a set of D&D dice, you're good to go. So what's my D&D history? Well, my brother played in the 70s, but I was never allowed to join in. As an adult, I always wanted to play, and I tried to play once with a group of actors, but I was really intimidated by their experience and their skill with improvisation and the voices that their characters did. I just, I didn't feel like I fit in. I took a few years off, gazing lovingly at my Dungeons & Dragons dice from time to time, wondering when I would get a chance to have an adventure again that didn't intimidate me. I feared it might be never, but then one day, a marvelous thing happened. My children got old enough to play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, glorious day, huzzah, huzzah! Geek celebration of the highest order! Who enters the scene? Rob. Rob is our DM, and I play a campaign. Me, my nine-year-old, and my almost 12-year-old. What edition do we play? I know you're all wondering. Fifth edition, yo! We rolled up our characters the old-fashioned way. Just dice and a piece of paper. No algorithm, no computers, old school, paper and pencil, character sheet, boom. We chose names for our characters and we made quite a bit of fuss about how awesome we were going to be as a team. I'm a war cleric, which means I'm like a religious warrior and also I'm a healer. My older son is an elven rogue. He's a dark elf, which means he can't really see in the day. And in real life, he's a true good human being. He's a rules follower, but he's playing a sharp-tongued assassin in our game. My younger son is a six foot five inch dragonborn, which means he's half dragon, half human, obviously. Here are the unbelievably incredible things that happened when I played Dungeons and Dragons with my children. Number one, it became like therapy. Basically, D&D brings out the truth in you. Like who you are, who you wish you could be, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. Based on how I make decisions about how my character should behave and how we should behave as a group, I have learned that my strengths are patience and cautiousness. And based on how scared I get when confronted by goblins and how confused I get when I try to decipher clues that my DM leaves for me, I've discovered that my weaknesses are fear and lack of logical thinking. For my sons, this has become an opportunity to show bravery, heroic might, and the beauty of conquest. We have had to work together and solve problems together. Like We fell into a river and we had to figure out how to get out together. My foolish firstborn elven rogue assassin son went on this stupid mission and he was attacked by zombies and I had to bring him back from the brink of death. And we were high-fiving and cheering like we just won big at the races. We felt togetherness, like we felt closeness. We were doing something amazing together. We had fun. 
It was like good therapy. Number two, we have learned how to manage unpredictability. This may come as a surprise to you. I'm not really an open-ended person and neither of my sons are either. We like rules, we like structure, we like schedules, and we like lists. D&D has forced us out of that way of thinking and it has loosened us up, or it's tried to. A few times when the DM would guide us toward like a set of choices, I would get so frustrated that I would start to cry, like for real, crying at the D&D table. See, if the DM were to say, do you wanna take the river path or do you wanna take the mountain path? Then I would know, I have two choices. But he doesn't do that, because that's not how D&D works. He basically just says like, where do you wanna do? And you have to create the options with your mind. Wow. Even though I'm a creative person, this is hard for me. Like this is a different set of muscles to exercise. It was good for me and my boys to live in a place of wonder and possibility as we went on this journey together. Number three, I haven't felt like the most connected mom lately. I've been working a lot. I've just, I've felt out of step. I feel like they're more comfortable with their dad than they are with me. And I know that some of that is age appropriate, but this Dungeons and Dragons campaign has shown me that there are ways that I can draw closer to my boys in ways that we're all comfortable with. We now have a language that's all our own. After the session, we talked about how it went and what we wanna do next time and what we could have done different. It's literally all we can talk about. It's special, it's ours. I know not every mom or dad is gonna be interested in playing D&D. Not everyone is into Warhammers and dragons and goblins and trolls and bags that can hold more inside than it looks like they can hold on the outside, whoa. And I know that not everyone is as enthralled with a beautiful set of D&D dice as I am. Those people may not have seen my dice. But for this mom, I have found something I love. And that love grows every time I roll the dice. Did you like that one? I like that one. If you like that one, there's more where that came from. Subscribe and check out these links. Woohoo, videos.